Good day, fellow biochemists um, and fellow visitors as well. Um, and, and a big welcome to the first timers, persons who are just coming to the meeting. My name is Damali Lewis. I am the president of the Biochemistry Society and welcome to our annual alumni day. I wish you all the best. So, but before we start um, the meeting, let's just do a quick prayer, please. I'm going to invite Alison to do the prayer. So just waiting on the prayer. Thank you, Alison. Thank you. Thank you, in. Good afternoon, everybody. You guys hearing me? Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Yeah. So, due to connectivity issues, slow flow, I can't show my face today, unfortunately. However, I hope you guys are doing well. I have some announcements to make. We actually are in contact with another club of having an interclub in and we're going to do a poll on their Instagram page starting tomorrow whereas you guys can vote if you guys want to use um, interclub in either chemistry or biology um, biology society so either the chemistry club or the biology society also there will be another poll or in the group chat you guys can suggest home experiments that you guys would want us, want us to try you guys can just put it in a suggestion. We're going to have a suggestion um, for on Instagram where you can put a suggestion of the home experiments that you guys want to do as well. Also, last but not least, we'll be having, well, we're thinking of having a virtual after in course party. Yes, I said it right. An after Woo! in course party. With lots of giveaways. When we say lots of giveaways, lots of giveaways. Bigger, better. And you know, say, it could just turn up. So, remember the three things. The poll about which club we went to interclub with. I want you guys to, to answer the poll. Also, the... How many is after that? How many is after that? Interclubbing. No, it's a party. What? It's a party. It's a good one. Party. Yeah, the party. And the home and, experiment. And the home experiment, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the announcements, guys. In between the meeting, hopefully, like after the third speaker, we're going to have some icebreak. We're going to have some riddles. Whereas... I don't know a thing already. Give, give up me the giveaways, man. You know that thing already. So, <laughs> so, of course, the winner would get something nice. So, have a blast, guys. Tune in. If your friend don't reach it, make it call your friend. Let them know, say, yo, if I followed right now. Let's go. Damali. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Qin, for that. That is Mr. Giveaway himself, Mr. PRO, Qin Campbell. Um... So for last, the last meeting, which was two weeks ago, actually, uh, we had a little game, a biochem quiz, you know, just about general quiz about the biochem society, you know, and it was via Kahoot. That coming was a very, very fun meeting. Everybody who was there can tell you it was it was such a great, it was such a great uh, meeting. Uh, the top three, I'm not sure if I can recall, I, I think it's Shemil, Shemil came third. Then the second place was Jordan, and then the first place was Alia. 
uh, all persons got prize, got prizes. So Mr. Q N Campbell, Mr. Giveaway, Mr. Piero himself lived up to his name, and you guys actually got prizes. So guys, no, no feel like say a joke thing on our other stuff. Some empty promises, him deliver man. So, so that was good. So the first meeting, which was two weeks ago, went well. We introduced ourselves. We got acquainted. We played games. And we announced that today would have been our alumni day. So I'm thanking everyone to come to, um, to actually coming out to the meeting. For those who are just joining us, a uh, big welcome again. If you if you know your friend, not reach it, just call him up and tell him, say, yo, why I came to society, have an alumni day. So we're not for Orion. And I don't think person should be missing this because as something where beneficial to everybody and every biochemist or microbiologist or molecular biologist or biotechnician should 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 be um acquainted with because this will be a very very informative meeting. Um or so we're going to go into the presentations. We're going to the presentations. So our first speaker will be um DeAndre Robinson. She's actually the research assistant for one of the most prolific scientists in the island, um, Prof. Roy. So persons who are in second year and third year will, will know um, Ms. Robinson. As well as first year, if you're doing microbiology, you will, will, you will be um, introduced to her. She's a very, very nice lady. I can tell you that you can talk to her and she, and she gives great advice. So without further ado, I will introduce the first speaker, Deandra Robinson, your time. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry for my setup. Um, I had a, a power outage at home, so I had to rush to my friends and get set up. In addition, I'm hiding from my toddler, so forgive, <laughs> forgive, forgive the setup. But hello, everyone. Um, again, Deandra Robinson, um, research assistant to Professor Roy. Um, for some reason, I was of the impression that I was going to come and you would have questions for me. But as to what I remember, you, I was being asked, what is it that you do with this biochemistry degree? So you, you graduate and what's next? And so I thought it was best to give you a little bit of my experience and experiences of my friends because I've stayed within the academic realms. Meanwhile, a lot of the persons I know, they're out there in the field. And so it's, it's optimistic of us to say that a lot of you will follow the path of persons like Eleanor, myself, Stephen. But I know for sure that a lot of you, you're going to do this degree and you're going to think this is it, at least for now, until maybe later on when you have higher ambitions and you, you think you want to do something else. Again, sorry for little miss if you can hear her. Sorry, guys. Okay. So what is it that you can do afterwards? So again, Stephen, myself, Eleanor, we have trotted along the academic lines. Um, and so a lot of you will think about doing postgraduate work. Um, Again, if you're doing biochemistry, your your options are, are are grand in that in this field at least because if you're doing biochemistry, that lays the groundwork for a lot of things. So you can decide that you want to focus on microbiology. You might want to focus on molecular biology. So you might want to focus on biochemistry. A lot of persons don't know, but you may also continue doing work in pharmacology a lot of persons have gone on to do medical microbiology and so to be honest the skill set that you that you gain doing these degrees so whether it is that you want to do biotech mold b micro b the generalized skill set that you will gain will gear you into a lot of fields in the academic sphere okay so Again, if you are interested in graduate work, it's best that you speak to your, the lecturers. And so if you, if you like, I mean, let's just give you the example of our research group then. If you like plants and you wonder about 
you know, virus, plant viruses, then there are lots of um, researchers that you can talk to. These researchers do not have to be from MedSci or biotech. There are a lot of researchers by life sciences as well. Some of you might think, oh, you want to deal with the chemistry aspect of it. And so you have cases where you can look to chemistry to, you know, using this, the same skill set that you have, but you can still do research work in chemistry. And so if research is what you're looking for, go ahead, talk to the lecturers that you meet, you know, look, 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 look up to see what research you is doing, see what you're interested in. Steven could tell you more about the MSc program because that's what he is enrolled in. And so he could tell you about some of the options that are there, all right? So if, if your choice is academia, you're set. You can do research here. Um, again, a lot of persons might opt to not do it here, but each to their own. It's just that if you want to do it, if it's something that you want to do, you have to you have to research, you have to think about it, you have to talk to the right people and get a feel of what it is that you want to spend another large chunk of your life studying because that's what it is. It's, it's less class to class based studying. It's more on your time studying, but it is still studying. And so you still want to make sure that you just the same as you spend time to think about the degree that you want. When you're back in high school, you thought about, oh, which subjects do I need to do to get here or there? It's the same, it's the same principle. You have to think and ask questions and do the groundwork to figure out what you want to do along the lines of academia. But majority of my cohort, persons who I did undergrad with, they are working in the field and are in industries. So I have friends who are at Lasco. I have friends who are at Wisinko. I have friends who have gone on to teaching. And so they started teaching here and then maybe they do uh, a, ma a master's in education and then they migrated. So that's the story that I have regarding my, the persons who I did my degree with. Most of them are not here They've gone the teaching route, route, but I also have a lot of friends who did master's program in other, in other science sections then. So um, I have one friend, she works with wood cats. I'm not sure if, if, if many of you would know that. So they make pallets for grace and so on, and she's doing very well. Now she's supervisor and she did a master's in, okay, I want somebody to help me out here because it's, it's evaded me completely. Environment. Okay, so I'll get back to you in a second. I'll write it in the chat when I actually remember it, but it is a, it's the OSH program. Yes, Eleanor, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so she did the OSH program. And so I, I think I have about one, Misha. Let's say four friends who went that route. So they have a they have background in biochemistry, but they did the OSH program, and that's an 18-month program. And she has gone from intern, maybe three of them are doing actually really well with with the line of job that they that they have right now. Um I've also compiled uh seem to do fairly well, right? All the persons, I know four persons, Stephen, and all of them tend to do very well because, well, occupational health and hazards and all of that. And so they are generally supervisors, supervisors at companies like Grace and Lasco and Surge, right? So Grace, Lasco, Surge, and Kamisha is at Woodcats, right? So, right. So that's one avenue again. And in that case, you can, you can, go on to that master's with even a minor in chemistry. I think they're very flexible with the degree. So once you have a science-based degree, you can, you can be admitted into that program, um, I think. So let me, let me tell you some other, some other places that I know persons have gone on to work with. So I had a friend who she, she was born Kingstonian, but she went to 
Hanover to work, well, Hanover, which is my hometown, to work at Copperhood, and she's doing well for herself there as well. Um, a lot of our biochemistry students have gone on to work in biomedical labs. There's also Bodles Agricultural Research Station. There's a Bureau of Standards. I know we, we had, well, Stephen can tell you that we have, for our lab, that's Profroy's lab, we normally have tons of volunteers annually. Stephen was one such volunteer. And I think the year before Stephen, we had two students. So right after, right after, well, even before graduating, the, because I think Prof. Roy is on the boards for, for Bureau of Standards. So normally if there are any vacancies, she's one of the very first to know. And I remember we were in the lab and Prof. walked in and said, oh, they need two persons, two interns. Because that's what they always say at first. We need two interns to, to work for us at Bureau of Standards. And they're both well employed at the moment. Those, those two students who were volunteering in our labs, because Prof walked in and just mentioned it to them and they're still working at Bureau of Standards now. I remember the other day we were having issues, Eleanor were having issues sourcing um, XL1 Blue for the, for the biochemistry labs or the biotech labs, right? And because we knew these two gentlemen, we were able to source those E. coli strains. So, right, so that's another, so I, so that's just another, another place that you can think about. So we have so biomedical labs, Bodles research. For Bodles though, you would have to have um, a bit of expertise in horticulture, um, seed growth, and and so for persons who are doing some lifestyle work at, there as well, that that would be good. I have another friend who works at the forestry department, doing very well for himself there as well. Um, mm, so you, we have a lot of food processing companies as well. So again, I know someone who, she did a master's, a chemistry master's in food and, I don't remember these master's <laughs> names, to be honest, I should have looked them up, but it, the, these persons are just coming to mind now as I speak. But so they did master's by chemistry. And so they're, they're working in the industry now. Um, I know persons at Environmental Solutions. You also have com um, fermentation companies. Yeah, fermentation companies. And so, right, so that one is agro-processing. Thank you again, Stephen. Right, so she did agro-processing. There's another food one as well. So those are, if you're looking, if you're definitely looking to go out and work in food processing and so on, then that a master's is going to help and a master's is always going to help if you're if you're in the science field right um just to name some other places so you have grace kennedy i know one person and again this person from grace kennedy that's this person had a, had a degree in chemistry as well so it's always good if you want to go and work in the industry, it's always good to have a balance between your chemistry and your biochemistry. Because at least from my experience, those are the people who I've seen gone on and successfully gotten jobs in these fields. We also have iSense. I don't know if you know where iSense is. It's it's down by LifeSci. It's by Life, it's behind LifeSci. Behind ComSci area there. There's like a building there and those generally employ or or graduates or biochem graduates as well um hmm. there's cardi and cardi is at the back of life side again it's close to mpi there's npi again natural products institute those generally employ our students there's src i was getting to src because src if anybody, if any, if any one of us go to SRC right now and we took a poll of UE graduates or biochemistry graduates, you will find that there are a lot of UE, UE alumni there at those, in, um, in those um, high positions and in general entry positions as well. So we have medical laboratories, we have forensic labs, and again, 
so you remember, so the Jamaica Defense Force, they have a forensic lab. They're also privately owned forensic labs that I found as well. There are the potato growers, there's Petro Jam. And again, if we're gonna look into Petro Jam, maybe having a bit of chemistry background is, is necessary as well. And I might be coming off bias and that's because I do have a chemistry degree as well. So I might be coming off bias, but I'm, I, I didn't want to come here and give you hypothetical you know, places where you can go and find jobs. I'm just talking about persons who I know to be employed. And yeah, they have, like myself, they have both the biochem and the, and the chemistry degree. Um, so while I've said all of this, I don't want to sugarcoat it so that we think, oh, straight out of, straight out of UA, we're going to find jobs that, that would be very, that would be very misleading. And I find that when we get to third year, that's when it all becomes very frustrating for a lot of us. We're very pensive. We're thinking like, what it is? What is it that we're going to do? A lot of us do not want to do, do want, don't want to go on to graduate school. And it's very important that if you're going to think about the lines of an MPhil or a PhD, this needs to be something that you love to do. And I'm sure if you talk to any other of the grad students in here they will make that very, very clear because it, if it's not something that you love, if it's not, you, you're gonna spend years and then realize, oh, it's maybe not for me and you found that you've wasted time or you do sloppy work because you, you aren't passionate about it. So it's very important that we find what we're passionate about. It's also very important to remember that you are all very young still. And so you might think, yes, this is the path that you want. And then you'll find that later on, you find that, mm, nah, maybe not, you know? And then there's some of you who are going to go on to be excellent grad students. You're gonna go there in the field and do well for yourself as well. But for some of us, we have to remember that it's still, we're, it's, we're still in a, grow, a growth phase because I do have, friends as well who've done the degree and decided nope i'm going to do an mba and they move over into the business sphere of things you know and i also have friends who because of their experience with biochemistry and and with botany work i know people who have got well friends who did tissue culture so if you do biotechnology you will do some tissue culture work and i know friends who have who are now entrepreneurs <laughs> you know making seedlets and so on i know friends who are making their own products you know like castor oil products and so on so it's very important that we find our passion and then we tap into it and understand that we're still learning some of us will be awesome grad students some of us will change path a bit some of us will use this degree that we have and make something new of it and i think that's what is very beautiful about having a science degree because we learn things logically and so we are able above anyone else i believe to go out there and navigate and make things and innovate you know so those are very important things to think about as we go along thinking about what it is that we want to do in our careers and what we want to do for the rest of our lives. So I hope to see many of you. So we won't be having 1011. So for the first year students, we're not having 1011 this semester. So I'd see you next semester. But for and for our second year students, I would have seen you already for the fluctuation labs that we finished up yesterday. And third year students will be seeing more of each other. So all the best to everyone and I hope this was somewhat um, helpful. Um, if you want, so I could I could send the list that I have because I, I did I did um, accumulate a list of places that I have friends working at at the moment. So I can send this link this file to you guys so that for future references you can talk to um, students about what their options are if they choose not to go the academic route from after the bachelors. All right, so that, that, 
that was all from me. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thank you, Miss Robinson, for that great, great, great presentation. We learned a lot, and I hope you can send me the list, send me the list, so I can get it to the students because we really, really need that list because that was a lot. I made some jottings though, so and I hope everyone made some jottings because that was a very good one. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome to our um, annual Alumni Day 2020. Uh, this is the Biochemist Society, and I am the president, Damali Lewis. Our next presenter is one of our lab demonstrators is for the biochemistry department, Miss Eleanor Terrellong. So Miss Eleanor, your time. All right, thank you, Damali. Thank you guys for inviting me. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay and keeping safe in COVID. Um, I was asked to speak today as somebody working in the field and I have to ask Damali why he invite me because I'm not working in the field, really. <clears throat> but um, I want to share my experience with you. I think DeAndre did a very good um, job of sort of laying out the different options and the different avenues that you can go with your degree. Um, so I kind of want to give you some perspective from a grad student um, and sort of just more generally figuring out, um, I guess, what kind of path you want to create for yourself. So. I finished my undergrad degree in 2011 and I was told at the time that you can't get any job with a first degree um, from Turner Applied, so you have to do a grad, um, graduate degree. Uh, so it was just kind of my expectation that after I finished undergrad, I was going to go and do the next step, which was the MSO PhD program. Um, I think that at the time, you know, Deandra spoke a lot a while ago about really thinking hard about making a decision to enter a PhD. Um, and I don't think that I personally had done enough research and um, just in terms of the logistics of the program and what it would be like, because it is a long period of time, five years, best case scenario, um, more than likely longer than that. Um, and just kind of figuring out what that looks like in your life, because the only thing that you're doing is not whatever job you take up now or whatever if you go into grad school your life is also developing along with that um and i mean it's not that i'm saying that i made a bad decision but i don't think that personally i had um done enough research and talked to enough grad students and learned enough about the program to be able to make an informed decision but anyway you know um i did what i did here i am in what 2020 now um so i'm starting well i'm supposed to be starting my sixth year um i had done the research project in third year i don't know how that worked with covid um and i because i normally encourage students that are thinking about research to tr at least do the research project or volunteer with a lab so you actually get the one-on-one -on -one experience of what research is and what that what that process is like um and i did fall in love with the research process pro process when I was doing the research course. Um, so that, that, you know, transitioning into a PhD program with that sort of experience was a lot easier. Um, I think that as scientists, we have to kind of start thinking outside of the box, especially with the way that the world is now in 2020, you know, we have to be able to apply our skills outside of the box that we have learned them in. Because when you are a scientist, as Deandra said, you're learning hands-on lab skills, yes, but you're also learning a lot of logic skills, a lot of problem-solving skills, a lot of writing skills. Um, and I know it's, it's hard to do your degree for three years and then hear, oh, but no, you must find a job outside of your field. But um, I think that we should also consider how many skills that we have that are applicable across fields and there are ways to tie them in one another. And I'm saying all of this to say that there's no one path that fits everybody. Academia is for some people. I thought academia was my be all and end all. No, I'm trying to leave. Um, industry is for some people. For a lot of people, you know, it, it's not what they want to do long term. You know, it's sort of um, 
repetitive. I don't know if repetitive is the right word to use, but you know, they, they want something that they can be more creative in and they want something that they can grow in different ways. Um, and whatever path it is that you're choosing, I think the most important thing for you to do is to talk to people and get their first hand experience and not their, just their first hand experience of, you know, um, what they're doing and how they got there, but what it is, what it is on a day to day, how much them I get paid. Um, what are the working conditions like? Do they get days off? Because you're thinking about your career path. And I know that, you know, I know it's rough. I know that right now a lot of people are just looking for um, a job to survive or income to survive, which is one thing. But I think that especially as scientists where, I mean, compared to other, other areas, we have less job options or less easy job options, so to speak. Um, we have to really be intentional about what career path we are choosing. Now, I'm not saying you have to figure out the answers all at once and you have to know everything now, um, but just ensure that you are, when you're crafting your life and your goals, um, you're not just thinking about one thing. So you're not just thinking, oh, I always wanted a PhD, so um, I'm going to spend 10 years in grad school and break my mental health um, just to get the doctor in front of me. Or, I always wanted to work in industry, but I'm not getting any industry job, so uh, I, you know I can't really pivot to something else. Um, so as I said, I think Dandre did a very good job of laying out um, some of the options, and I know that that list will help you. Um, I don't see any questions. This question for me: What industries can a biochemistry degree be utilized in? Um, okay, I don't know if you heard Dandre presentation biochemistry um any of the ethanol companies why is it like you know sorry i don't know how to use this thing okay yeah any of the ethanol companies um agro processing um biochemistry probably um the petroleum companies um i don't know if younger wants to supplement me Yeah, rum industry, Steven. So that any of the ethanol companies. Um, yeah, those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I don't see any more questions. I don't know what else to say. Even places like True Juice. Oh, realistically, what's the pay grade for an individual with a bachelor's degree in the industry? as well as in education okay and in the i mean it's going to depend on the company private or um you know the size of the company public or private um i'm guessing you're asking in the industry and then in education like separately that's what i understand the question um right as nicolai says it depends on the industry i mean entry level bachelor's degree it's also going to depend on the fact do you have experience or not. Um, it's I'm I'm just thinking off the top of my head places that I know it's going to be somewhere between a hundred and maybe two hundred two fifty a month. Um, as I said, depending on the industry, depending on your level of experience. Did many of these people do their masters? I'm guessing the people that DeAndre was talking about. Um, I don't know. Most people that I know um, that are working in the industry did some sort of graduate program, whether it was an MSc or an MPhil PhD program. Um, a lot of MSCs are 18 month programs, one year, um, one year, 18 month, two year programs. Um, the difference is well i guess you should know this the difference between msc programs and mso programs is that msc programs are self-funded so you have to pay to return um some courses like for example the forensics program is um sorry 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 let me back up msc programs you have to pay to return some programs like the forensics programs are what they call self-funded so you have to pay a really big tuition um, and it's quoted in US. Um, Stephen can probably tell me exactly what 
the tuition for that week. For MSc programs across the board, you have to pay tuition. How the MPhil PhD program works is that you register as an MPhil student, um, and so the MPhil is, I guess, the research master's part of it, and then the PhD is the research doctorate part of it. So you do the same project, you do the MPhil portion, after two or three years, you either decide, okay, I want to proceed to PhD, and you do an upgrade examination, or you say, nope, this is not it, you write it up and you can go home with the MPhil. Um, MPhils don't really carry a lot of weight, so if you're not planning to go the full PhD route, it's probably better you do an MSc program if you want to have a master's degree under your belt. Um, for the MPhil PhD program, you are not required to um, pay tuition. Um, well, if you qualify as a, for, as a full-time student, you're not required to pay tuition. Um, you, we are required to demonstrate labs, um, and we get a stipend of $50,000 a month um, to live off of. Not allowed to work. So that's that's what it's based on. Stephen says it's around 9000 US for the forensic program for the diploma. Um, okay, 9000 US for the diploma in the forensics program, and 13900 for the master's. That's over the 18 months, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes, so for the entire program, it's 13900 for the master's. So you have to, as I said, you have to really think about what you're doing. Um, if you're saving up for a master's, you know, be, I mean, it's okay. It's okay to get a job that's not in the field if, you, if you're trying to save up for your master's. It's okay to, um, because it's never going to be a straight path. So it's okay to deviate as long as you kind of figure out what you want to do. Um, and that is it. One last question I see. I'm interested in entering the field of nutraceuticals. I'm majoring in biochemistry. What courses or minors should I consider in order to prepare me for this field? Well, I'm guessing you're doing all the plant biochemistry. I didn't, I didn't do biochemistry, so I'm not sure what is required, but I'm guessing you're doing um, the plant biochem courses. Um, consider doing chemistry courses, um, the natural products. I don't know the exact chemistry courses. I think Deandra could speak to that as well. But they're definitely um, chemistry courses that when it would be organic chemistry, I'm almost sure in terms of doing extractions, right? Organic chemistry one and two, um, any sort of food chemistry. Um, oh yes, you need to do some life science, some botany courses. The third year botany courses, you probably have to do that. Um, so yes, let me down. So I think that's it for me. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I hope that I was helpful. I don't think I was very helpful, but I hope that I was at least helpful to one person today. So thank you. Thank you very much, Eleanor. Thank you. Of course, you were you were a lot of help. Uh I learned some I learned some things. Um, I hope you guys have jotted down some things that Eleanor told, told you, as well as Deandra, because this this is this is very this is all when I say new to me, but it's very very informative. And as a third year student, I think I, I'm I'm very very glad this meeting has been kept because it is really really important for us. So I hope everybody is understanding. For those who are just joining us, welcome to our alumni day 2020 where persons who have completed their degrees and doing the fancy masters and all those things are going are talking to us and giving us advice. Um, they'll answer your questions once they get to it as well. So thank you, Eleanor, for that. Thank you very, very much. Our next speaker is Stephen Stone. So I'll hand over to him right now. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope everybody can hear me well. Um, Deandra and Eleanor pretty much went through everything or most of the things, so there's very little I can add. Um, I can start with in terms of my friends who have finished their undergraduate degrees in biochemistry and some did microbiology, in addition to some of the 
places that Deandra and Eleanor stated, I know people who moved on mainly to forensics. So a lot of people have gone that route. But for me personally, I am currently doing a master's in biomedical research. Now, my master's is a little bit different from the regular master's because mine is almost a mixture of what you would do in the MPhil with what you do in a regular MSc. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, in terms of school journey, I know not, it wasn't really said much with Dandra and Eleanor, but they tell you at the beginning of the program to read for your degree. And it's something that I don't think I realized until second year that it was very, very literal. Um, a lot of my lectures, I was very, I would pester them so much in terms of things that I can't get when I'm doing the lectures or stuff that I didn't understand. Um, so it's very important to, I don't want to say bother, but go to them if you don't understand something. They will give you times that they're off. You can email them, but whatever you do, don't just sit there and say, I'm going to go home and try and figure it out. And if it doesn't work out, then that's it. No, you have to make sure that you are going to these people because at the end of the day, you are the one that, that's doing the degree. Um, try to have a group of people that you can study with. Um, some people work better in groups. Some people might work better alone. And that's fine if you're one of those people who can work alone. But having a group of people will allow you to, well, for me personally, it helps me with my degree because there were some people who were better at certain topics and others were in other topics. So while I could help them with something that I was good at, they could help me with something that they were exceptional in or that they were good in or great in. In terms of majors and minors, I think for me, that was one of the biggest things with my school journey because when I came, I had this grand idea that I was going to do like a double major in molecular biology and biochemistry. And then when I came, I found out that I wasn't able to do that. Then I said, okay, I'll do a double major in biochemistry and chemistry. And why that never worked out either. But <laughs> it's better to, once you start, a lot of you guys probably maybe in second or third year now, but when you start to come to UE, if there's any first years watching, just try and get as much information as you can in terms of the degree. And as Deandre and Eleanor said, have an idea of what it is that you want to do. If you're not entirely sure, like me, because when I came in, I just knew that I liked the lab work and I also liked research. So I started the biochemistry route because biochemistry kind of gives an overall experience of the others. So you get a little bit of microbiology, a little bit of molecular biology. You don't really get much biotechnology, but you, you can get a little in year three if you go and do the course. So find out what it is that you want to do and what you like, and then kind of plan according to that. A lot of time management is also a part of it because why? When you're doing a lot of science courses or a lot of biochemistry labs, you know, you finish one lab now and then another lab do you, and then another lab do you. And by the time you realize it's in course, I did remember studying all of the topics. So it's very crucial to kind of manage your time in a way that will allow you to not get too overwhelmed because it's university, it's going to be an overwhelming thing. Um, another thing that you can look at is, as previously said, whether it is you want to do research, you want to go in academia, or you just want to work into the industry. The thing is, though, with almost all science degrees, you almost always need a graduate degree. They kind of tend to look for that extra criteria or something to show that you're a, a cut above the rest. So even if you don't want to go directly into research, some places might ask for masters or just to make it a bit more competitive, they'll tell you that it's best for you to do the masters. 
Um, what else can I talk about? Okay, I can talk about my program. So as Ellen was letting you know, some of the master's programs can be very expensive. So what I know a lot of people might do is they finish the undergrad, go off to work and try and save up enough money to come back into the master's program. And that's if you're doing the MSc program. If you're doing the MPhil, as Eleanor stated, you are able to get what's called a departmental where you don't have to pay tuition and then you can work as a lab demonstrator, which is so much fun, <laughs> and get a little stipend, but that's another route. For me, after graduation, I went straight into the MSc program. I actually just finished my first year of my master's, but to be honest, I wasn't sure whether I was going to immediately start the master's or go and do a job. I actually went on two interviews at Bureau Standard and one at Institute of Forensic and Legal Medicine, both of which you can do with a biochemistry degree or any of the degrees within that realm. But I am someone that wants to do research. I kind of, as Eleanor talks about the repetitiveness, I'm not one for that. So I like to be able to discover new things and do new trials and new tests. So I decided I was going to do the MSc route. Now, my thing was to get into MPhil, you kind of need a thesis. So you kind of have to have an idea of what it is that you're coming in to do because, you know, you're going to be spending the next five years doing this. So you kind of have to have a game plan. I wasn't entirely sure where it was going to take me. So I went around and I spoke to different lecturers and then a lot of them weren't able to take on a new person at the time. So I heard about the MSc program, which is similar to the MPhil. However, you do about three or so extra courses that just teach you the fundamentals of research. And there are also supervisors that they have already with projects on hand. So it wasn't that I went in and then had to create a brand new thing for myself. There were already programs or projects that supervisors wanted to take on. And from there, I was able to choose. So that actually got me into the microbiology, microbiology, yeah, medical microbiology field. So I'm actually working more over to the side of the hospital. And so far, it's actually been good. And I'm learning stuff outside of the scope of just biochemistry. So I'm, so you see biochemistry, as I said before, and we can't stress it enough, biochemistry is broad. So when you do that degree, you also have so many skills that you learn that can branch out into pharmacology, biotechnology, the, med the medical, as Eleanor stated, forensics. I know somebody who actually went and did their master's in forensics and then went on and got a job over at Indicom, I believe. And there's someone who went abroad. Guys, don't be afraid to go abroad if you are able to. Um, they're gone abroad and they're doing their master's and working with um, cannabis. So there's so many different things that you can do. Yes, definitely for microbiology and virology. If you're doing those, then the hospital is a good look. But um, I think that's basically it for me. I hope that answered some questions. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Stephen. Um, representing for biochemistry, as they say, biochemistry is very broad. Uh, I think that's a very good thing and a very bad thing as well because you know, broad is like we can we can branch out, yes, but then again, it's still kind of hard for us. So, but thank you, nevertheless, for the information and the advice and for learning experience. Thank you for sharing your experience. So. Let's hope for that as well. So our next presenter is Kevin Stewart. So he's supposed to he's a biotechnician. So Kevin, your time.
presentation. And I'll explain why I did that. Now, it was also stated that three undergrad years, it's important that you get some idea of what you really love. And that will sort of dictate what you love determines where you really want to end up, and then that will dictate the courses that you do. And of course, your motivation to do those courses will be affected as well. So in addition to doing all the requirements for biotechnology, I also did a course called Principles of Marketing. And the reason for that is because I want to, I don't see myself staying in full academia. I want to kind of entrepreneurship, but more scientific entrepreneurship, if that makes sense. So I did Principles of Marketing, and I also did, I didn't do a minor in chemistry, but I actually did all the organic chemistry courses offered by the chemistry department, based on what I want to do. And in addition to that, yeah, I think that was it, yeah. Organic chemistry courses, and I did a marketing course. And that's all because I wanted to go on the lines of entrepreneurship. I could have also done the entrepreneurship course being offered over the social sciences faculty, but I didn't. For the courses that I have done, we come back to your passion. You really need to be passionate about what you're aiming for, otherwise you won't really have the motivation to stick through the lines. Because there will be happens, right? No journey is easy, undergraduate degree is not easy, isn't easy, and MSc isn't easy, work isn't easy. So if you really aren't motivated to do what you're doing, then it's going to be a rough ride. Another thing important during your undergrad years is that you make note of all the skills you're being exposed to and don't take them for granted. Because it's better to do undergrad only once and then you only have to brush up. But then you do undergrad, forget everything, and then it's almost like you have to start over from scratch. It's the foundation that's solid. So it's not all about grade. probably one week before the exam, get a decent grade at pass. But this is the fundamentals that you're being taught. And I'm saying this because you'll understand why I'm saying this. Kind of in the field, if you think about it, I'll talk some more about it. And I'll show you how knowing those skills actually help you out in the long term. Even though you think some things might not be necessary. Or maybe points at the time, but you sometimes you don't know how much they really help you. All right, so I got sort of lucky. You could call it lucky. A part of it was yeah, you can just call it lucky. I actually employed kind of in the field right after finishing undergrad. After undergrad in May, June, May. Well, the degrees is July and actually started working in July. And a part of that was because, you know, they say in third year, especially by second semester, you should be looking for jobs at places where you'd want to go. Uh, should be thinking about applications and I think. But I'm more interested in entrepreneurship. So you might be wondering how I'm interested in entrepreneurship and then I'm going to apply for a job. And why didn't I go to a master's immediately? And I also want to combine you know, scientific work and entrepreneurship in my line of entrepreneurship. So where I was working was at the Biotech R&D Institute. Now, it's important that you have mentors or somebody who is older who can sort of guide you or give you some advice. So I actually do Herbalife as well. And one of my mentors in Herbalife is actually a medical doctor. And I spoke to him. And he asked me what I wanted to do. So I told him I wanted to do entrepreneurship and on the lines of nutraceuticals and applied biotechnology. And he mentioned Dr. Low. So you know, I went, I tried to get a contact for him, called a couple of companies, eventually a meeting. And then, you know, he looked at my resume and then I got hired. But it doesn't work like that traditionally, right? Because I... I don't think, you know, right? I had really good grades, so that probably played a role. And you know, not everybody would be lucky. 
So it's good if you if you don't get in directly like that, it's good if you can start by volunteering. That really helps because then you get to showcase your skills in a relatively low risk environment. And you also gain experience as well. So you can start by volunteering. Because I actually started with an internship. And then that was for like one or two months. Yeah, and we got lunch, yeah, one or two months. And then it transitioned into a position. So that's that. In terms of the position, now, this was at the Biotech R&D Institute. So he has a number of companies. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Medicanja, Eden Gardens, Wellness Brands, Biotech R&D Institute. So I was at the Biotech R&D Institute because that's really what I wanted to focus on, right? The biotechnology, development of products, that kind of thing, nutraceuticals. And I say it's kind of in the field, in the field because at biotech is kind of limited by resources in a sense. And it's not like strictly the science that you would have been used to coming out of undergrad. Now, undergrad, you learn a lot of theory. I mean, in, I didn't get to apply most of the stuff until like third year biotech when you started learning a lot of practical techniques and manufacturing processes. But before that, it was really a lot of theory. I'm not sure how molecular biology and biochemistry final years work out. But transitioning to this sort of environment is an environment where they expect you to be producing a plan. So we did a lot of product development and product conceptualization. And this included pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, cosmeceuticals, kind of thing. And lots of work. But as I say, you have to be passionate about it. And it, it requires a lot of reading. And that's mentioned in the first part of my presentation. Cooking thought. That really you. And it really sets you apart. If you really know what you want to to move up. All right, so that was work. I only worked there for. You know, you guys have wondered why I didn't go and apply to Grace. I actually applied for a microbe position at Sepra here from him. Just to let you know, I was very why. Yeah, so you might have wondered why I didn't like, focus on like a larger company kind of thing. And that's it. I was And you're supposed to be five company, you may do a lot of things that are Supervisors, as Stephen was saying before, we've already had topics. Independently, mm -hmm. 
wanted to define that is along the lines of vector control. Now, you have to remember saying why I'm choosing vector control as a research. All right, um, sorry for that, guys. Uh, seemed like Kevin had some technical difficulties. Uh, one day for flu him over something, but just never did a workout. So he phoned it uh, to the break. A lot of breaking up was happening on his part. So I'm very, very sorry for that. So if anything, I'd probably have him do a separate video and upload it on the YouTube channel and send you guys so you guys can actually hear him because what he's saying is very, very important. So I'll try to get that done. So apologies again. For those who are just joining us, this is our Alumni Day 2020. Um, so we have, I think we have two speakers left. I'm going to invite Nikolai, Nikolai Luthers to come speak right now and share with you guys. All right. So, firstly, let's let's do a quick mic check. Damali, are you are you hearing me? Because this is going to be a very interactive session. So let me first start off, um, and let me see. Damali, is everything good on on the audio line? Okay, good. I'm I'm, I'm good. All right. So let me first start off by saying good afternoon. Welcome. This is an amazing initiative be championed by the Mali when he gave me the call, I think it was last week, and he told me his plans. I was definitely very excited about it. But most importantly of all, I'm so excited to hear from the presenters. Special thanks to Deandra, Eleanor, Stephen, Kevon, who had a bit of technical difficulties himself. And when I look at all of the things that they have said, they really, really, really just took everything from me. You know, I'm just here to put the icing on the cake. But it really shows that there is a lot of similarities in terms of our experiences. I am not going to go on too long about, you know, jobs and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to take a different approach because what I'm here to really talk to you guys is about, you know, your well-being after this program. So you've completed the program you're looking for jobs. One of the things you have to realize is that, you know, in your 20s, it's going to be a very dynamic part of your life. It's going to be a very interesting part of your life. As Eleanor said, it's not going to be one straight road, right? However, you have to realize that what you have learned here in your degree program, if anything else, it has taught you discipline. I remember doing my undergrad and my undergrad, it was just very, very painful years of studying, studying some things that I, I don't even know for the life of me, I don't even know how I'm going to use it. But again, you have to look at the discipline and the, the values that you learn and, and the dedication and the coming to hard work and these things that you learn are very important. Now, just to wrap up everything, in short, when you do your degree, it's not the end all of end all, right? It's just an introduction. It's the, if we are at a restaurant, it's like the appetizer. The main course is you apply yourself, right? And whether you want to go in academia, or industry, what you have to realize is you're going to have to 
embark on what is known as continual professional development, which means that yes, you've completed your degree, but you have to be willing to learn and to continue learning. I mean, it sounds cliche to be honest with you, but you're learning every day, right? And you have to learn new skills. When you go into industry, you're going to be required to learn a whole new set of skills. You're going to be required to learn, you know, or to operate at a different level of discipline that you're probably not even used to. And the same thing with academia too as well. So you have to be willing to continually learn and, and engage in this whole, this whole process. So, I mean, I know a lot of grads, especially in my year, worked in different places. The Bureau of Standards is one, the SRC. The list goes on and on and on. But when you finish your degree, you have to be saying to yourself, you know what, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to apply myself. At the end of the day, when you do your degree, you want to be a well-rounded individual. Um, you know, and that's why I do encourage students who have taken biotechnology or biochemistry or microbiology to also do things like management studies, right? Because at the end of the day, for example, say you're not doing, you're not working, for example, in you know your, your area, you need to be working in other in, in other fields too as well. And don't think that because you're not doing a lab related job, it doesn't mean that the experience that you have not useful. So that's just to really put the icing on a cake um, and to just really add um, and to wrap up everything in summary, right? Um, for all the wonderful things that were said earlier, especially from Deandra and from Eleanor, who gave like a very vivid outline of what the MPhil program is like. Stephen who gave a, a you know outview of the MSc program. Um, and then also kept on to as well, who gave a bit of summary of industry. But in short, guys, whatever you're doing, don't worry about it. You're going to have to realize that to some, some part of you is going to want to say, okay, you're not. Let me try and figure out everything. But in reality, you might not have everything figured out. And that's a part of life. But whatever skills you learn here, don't be afraid to um, apply it. I remember seeing one comment about neutral skills. If you want to do nutraceuticals, if you want to go into product development, go and learn. There's a reason why it's called reading for your degree, because everything that you need to learn in life cannot be taught at the University of West Indies. You will have to continue to, to learn outside. So it's just to really learn as much as you can right here and then expand your horizons um, otherwise. But thank you so much, Damali. It has been a great talk. Um, I'm hoping to see some questions because I, I plan this to be a very, more, a very much interactive session. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, I'd gladly answer if you want to know more things about, okay, oh, interesting. How long do you take to get a job after getting your degree? So with my, uh, my situation, I knew that I wanted to be MPhil, um, PhD. So immediately after completing my uh, Thank you, Eleanor, that's funny. Um, immediately after completing my degree, my bachelor's degree, I just applied straight out um, to do my master's in field biotechnology going up to PhD right now. But I know some friends who've gotten jobs right off the bat as they left. I have a good friend who's at the Bureau of Standards of Jamaica, a great place to work. If you can get a job at the Bureau, trust me, will come out a really wonderful person and SRC too as well, you know. So yeah, I went straight to the MPhil program. How long is the MSc? The MSc is 18 months. The good thing about the MSc is that with the MSc program, and I know I'm not really qualified to talk about it because, that's, you know, that's Stevens um, area, but the good thing with the MSc program is that once they say, you know, it's 18 months, it's 18 months, you do 18 months and you can leave. So hi, let's okay this person. They say that they're majoring in biotechnology. How marketable is that? It's as marketable as you make it, right? Again, let's talk about what is known as a job market. One of the things you have to understand with a job market is that at different points there will be different demands. So in the job market right now, there might be a couple of openings for the next year. You might not have so so much. But in terms of the marketability of a biotechnology degree, it's very marketable. What I will also say to you guys is that, listen, 
if you're not getting anything in Jamaica, don't be afraid to go abroad. Go abroad, spend some time in a foreign country, get a job there, meet some new people, get some, some connections. I think we spoke a lot about working, but I don't think the point of and making contacts you know, in places like the United States or in Europe, I don't think that was something that was probably even stressful. Yeah, go abroad and get, get a job if you can't get a job out here. Go abroad. But a biotechnology degree is, is very is marketable. You, have, you learn a lot of rudimentary skills that allows you to be in different sectors. So you can work as a microbiologist. You, know, you can work in a biochemistry lab. Um, but again, one of the things you have to realize is that when you reach that job, you have to perform. So it's not so much about the degree as, as much as it's you as the individual who needs to show up to that work and provide value. So yes, it's, it's a marketable degree, but you yourself has to be marketable. You know, to answer that question. Perfect. I wonder if there's any more questions. Let's see if there's any more. Okay, cool. Questions are coming in. Question, is the MSc more marketable than the MPhil or not really? That's an excellent question. With the MSc, you will finish a lot faster, even though you have to pay for it out of your own pocket. But MPhil tends to be along the lines of an academic degree. MSc is what you know as an applied degree. So MSc is recognized as people who are in industry. So if you want to be in industry, go and get an MSc, right? The only thing is that you have to pay for it. But in terms of industry, industry tends to recognize that MSc far more um, than an MPhil. Because of the MSc program, you tend to be a lot more rounded. Um, for example, in the case of, I think it's over by chemistry, food and agro-processing, you learn a lot of business skills. You know, that makes you a lot more rounded in comparison to an MPhil. So if you're going to be in a case where you want to be in academia, for example, say you want to go to do a PhD at the next, you know, at somewhere outside of you, you want to go abroad, then an MPhil degree is probably what you'd want, right? But if you're saying to want to work at a, you know, a big industrial company, they're more looking for MSc that's a bit more rounded. Um, so yes. Okay, so this wonderful person says, what opportunities for gaining experience are you aware of? Example, internships and programs. All right, so let me <clears throat> let me just, and I hope I don't get myself in too much trouble for saying this. There are a couple of places where you can do um, internships, right? So one of the places that tends to take a lot of interns every year is the Scientific Research Council. You're interested in doing an internship at the science and science, the Scientific Research Council of Jamaica. Got a bit tongue twisted um, right there. Please contact them, Mali, and I'll definitely try and help you guys to get some spots on that. But every year, the Scientific Research Council takes interns, and they generally tend to need a lot based on what they're doing and um, the amount of you know work that they're doing. It's a great learning experience for you guys. The SRC takes internships, um, Bodos takes internships, um, the Biotechnology Center takes internships. You can intern at um, Prof. Roy's lab, um, or you can intern at any other labs in the Biotechnology Center if you want. But yep, internships, you can always go to SRC. And if you're really serious, you can contact Damale and you can contact myself, and we'll, we'll try and arrange that for you. Any other questions? All right. No questions? Okay, okay. As I always say um, during my talks, going once, going twice, going three times, maybe going a fourth. All right, guys, sold. So this wraps up the end of my presentation. Special thanks to all the presenters before. Okay, oh, I say one last one. Is it necessary to do only science courses? In the grand scheme of things, you don't want to do only science courses because here was all, all right? When you go and you do courses that are only science related, it's not good because when you go to work, unless you go into work in academia, there are other skills apart from science that you need 
to have. But when you're going into real working where you're going to need management skills, um, the other spoke about OSHA, which is Occupational Safety Health um, Hazard Analysis, I think that's the term, OSHA. But even simple things like that, these are skills that you need, even though it's not taught in your degree. If you don't have OSHA, then you know you are. You can't even work in some fields, right? So, so you don't want to be doing science courses. Go on the management studies courses. I would recommend everybody to go and do, I think you can do OSHA and undergrad. I think there's OSHA and undergrad. Go on the OSHA, occupational safety and, and hazard. That, that's a very versatile field. Go and do those courses, but do not stick to just science only courses unless you plan to be in academia for all of your life. Can you drop an email? Okay, my email is nlwest at hotmail.com. Um, you can always just ask Damale if anything, if you need to get in contact with me. I will gladly answer any questions um, that you may have otherwise regarding internships and so on. Okay, so it seems that there are no more questions. So, all right, guys. Okay, one more. How long did it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I answered that one already. Yeah, it, I went straight from from MPhil to well, straight from BSc to MPhil. You know, as a matter of fact, when I got accepted, when I finished my degree, my BSc, I think next week I just went to the lab that I knew I wanted to go, and I just started, you know, as boss opened the door and said, "Yo, here's my space. I want my space." You know, and started preparing myself for my first sins. But as Dion just said earlier, it was something that I knew I wanted to do and it was something that I was determined to do. So you know can face the challenges of, of, of the program. But if, you, if you're not so sure of what you want to do, go and work. You don't have to commit on MPhil immediately like myself or I think Eleanor, I think Eleanor what did her MPhil immediately after. Go and work for a year, right? Go and work for your, and then figure out what you need to do. But a lot of the, the, the lessons you learned in terms of the discipline and the hard work, you can take that through to anything else. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. Damali handing over to you guys. Excellent job. Um, congrats to your team. So to all the hardworking members of the Biochemistry Society Exec Board, I am extremely proud of you both myself and Marlon. Marlon sends his greetings. Marlon actually works in a pharmaceutical company and for the life of us, we've been asking you know, some of you guys, if you're interested in, in, in um, doing an internship to, to volunteer. So that's another internship opportunity that you guys can think of. So Damali, handing over to you right now, waiting for you to come on screen. <laughs> All right, thank you, Nikolai. Thank you, Nikolai. Uh, we love that. We love that. Um, I'm, I can speak for the other persons. They really love it because when them hear internship, everybody's skin catch a fire. I can tell you that everybody's skin catch a fire. So, guys, don't worry. I will get um Nikolai's e email address and I will send it in the the Biochem Society main group. Um, as well, I'm going to get the job listing from DeAndre Robinson and send as well. Just give me some time, but I will have those to you. As well, I'll get some more information from Nikolai about these internships, the SRC internships and the, the pharmaceutical internships. Uh, Nikolai and Marlon are actually the co-founders of the Biochem Society. So a special, special, special big up to them. Special big up to them. So we know everybody interested in the internship thing. So once you get that thought out, I guess we can, after some games and some giveaways thing, we can probably choose the person after that. So we have to start a meeting and start participating in the games and the little quizzes and the little things that we'll have so we can actually fight for that and thing. You see it? So, Nikolai, yeah, man. All right. So I'm going to invite Shamani Adams right now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, is there any other questions for persons who are just joining us? Is there, is there any other questions you'd like for any of the speakers in particular? We had DeAndre Robinson, we had Stephen Stone, we had Kevin Stewart, we had Eleanor Terrellong, and we also had Nikolai Luther. So if anybody has a specific question for any one of those persons, 
as well, um, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Stewart, who had the technical issues, he will be doing a small video. He will be doing a small video, and I will be uploading it on this channel, the YouTube channel. So you guys can look up for that as well. We'll be having that video. So he'll be doing it, and I'll be sending you that as well. Oh, um, a person from microbiology will also be doing a video. So I'll have two videos for you guys to upload on YouTube channel. So you guys should look out for that and make sure to follow us on um, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. So you guys make sure you guys do that. So I'm going to hand over to Shamani Adams right now. Hi, so I'm Shamani Adams. Um, and on behalf of all the members of the Biochemistry Society, I just wanted to give a big thank you to all the presenters today. It was very informative, very interactive, and I'm sure everybody got some information on whatever it is that they were unsure about today. So once more, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for making the time. Thank you for interacting. Thank you for sharing your experiences. And I do hope that everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you guys for coming out as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. And that was Shamani Adams, our treasurer. Thank you for that, um, Shamani. So thank you for everyone who came out to our annual Alumni Day 2020. I hope you all learned something. You know, it was a very good meeting. Uh, we will get you some, just a reminder um, about the interclubbing. We will get some information to you regarding the interclubbing. So as soon as probably early next week, next week, because, you know, we have meetings every two, every two weeks. Question, why are you still in Jamaica when people paint a picture that Jamaica is still bad? I don't think that question is for me. I wonder I wonder if Nikolai didn't want the question to answer, even though we kind of finish up stills. Um, anyways, anyways, I'd like to tell you guys that, uh, yeah, the interclubbing thing, the inter interclubbing. So we'll get some information to you guys and relate early next week about interclubbing, um, as well as the party, the, the virtual party. So you guys can look out for that. We're still in planning mode, so we'll, we, we'll let you guys know, isn't me? Isn't me some person, anybody were interested in, in jerking some chicken, some bringing the soup, isn't me, and the rum and them, could think they and them, you know, when they can just link up in a day, they something me there, the main, the main, the main group. So, all right, Nikolai, Nikolai, Nikolai can come on now and answer that question for the person. Oh, sure. You have a, a share screen. All right, so the question was, why am I still in Jamaica if I paint it in such a bad light? All right, there's, there's a couple of things, all right? So number one, number one, you have to realize that I knew what I wanted to do. I knew who I wanted to work with, all right? So that's number two, that's number one. Number two, um, one, of the, one of the sections of my work, I actually got a chance to fly out. I flew out and I was doing my research at Purdue University, which is number three in agriculture, I think if not in the university, if not in the USA, in the whole wide world, right? So I did a portion of my studies at a top ranked university. Now, I'm not saying that Jamaica is all that bad, it's a third world country. And what you have to understand is that when it comes down to third world countries and science, we are playing catch up. We don't have these fancy resources that Americans have. But the point that I was definitely trying to get across was that, listen, if you can go abroad for some time, go abroad. Go abroad. Go abroad. And and make some contacts. And you know, I've been fortunate to, to really have some contacts abroad. So, but for me, I knew who I wanted to work with, I knew what I wanted to work with, as a matter of fact. Um, my research is on, on coffee leaf us in Jamaica. So I mean I had to stay in Jamaica to do my work anyways. But if you can actually go in go abroad, go abroad. There's nothing wrong. You know, spend some time in a different country. You know, you're young. You have the ability to do that. So that is that is why. And I think maybe if I could even live life over, I'd probably go abroad too as well. No worries. So if you do have that opportunity, don't sit down and say, oh, you know, I just want to stay in Jamaica for the rest of my life. No, man. Go to a foreign country, meet new people, get some contacts, and that will help you. So I know, no, yeah, man, I know Dylan. I know it's not anything 
not, I know it's not personal. No worries about it. But again, the point that I'm definitely trying to stress is if you have the opportunity to meet people from all over the world, that's how you get these collaborations. That's how you can get things done both in academia and in industry. So if you have a chance to go abroad, go abroad, go abroad. When I really need help with science out here or you think it's not working, I have to go find some people abroad. So those connections that I have overseas are, are priceless. So go abroad for a bit of time. Go and experience a new culture. So Damali, back over to you. All right, guys. Um, so later, I think it's later today on the Instagram page. You guys should log in and tune into that because I think there are going to be some games or quizzes or riddles on the Instagram page. Uh, my PR will some, have something fun. If not, they will they will relate to you in the group, in the Biochem Society main group. So you can always go to that. If you haven't followed us, follow, follow us on Instagram as well as, as, well as um, subscribe to our YouTube account. So make sure to go to the Instagram account later and see what games are in store and what riddles are or anything that is in store because these games, you know, everything of giveaways and everything of prizes as we missed the giveaway PR rule, as said. Uh, so we're hoping to have an engagement, engaging activity later on. So just turn up for that, isn't me? And as well, thank you for all coming. I'd like to thank all my exec members, isn't me, for being such wonderful people. Is me and just uh Kevin, Kevin, who's supposed to do the video for you guys, said if you have any questions for him to address, you can just relate. So you guys can text in the Biochem Society group and let me know which questions you would like to ask him so he can make a video addressing those questions. So please, as well as for the experiments, for the home experiments, guys, please make the suggestions about the experiments that you guys would want to do. Remember, we're all being 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 active and participating so you guys can just make the suggestions all right uh, i think that's it so remember to go on the instagram page so thank you guys for coming and keep safe all right so bye guys